That was the police call. Then, minutes later, the announcement. My fellow New Yorkers, we got it. James Frank, now the accused subway shooter, found and arrested in the East Village. And talk about see something, say something. Tips from New Yorkers who saw him on the street today brought an end to the two days of terror and fear. And good evening, everyone, at 6 o'clock. I'm Bill Ritter. Liz has the night off. You heard the mayor say it. We got him. A chant almost this afternoon after police capture and get ready to soon charge criminally Frank James as the man who opened fire on the New York subway yesterday. James found in the East Village after New Yorkers saw him and tipped off police. Tonight we're learning one of those tips may have come from Mr. James himself. No resistance in the arrest, a far cry from the terror and the fear and the chaos from nearly 30 hours before in a crowded subway station in Brooklyn. James in handcuffs taken out of the 9th precinct transferred to federal custody. He faces terrorism charges involving mass transit. The penalty for that, up to life in prison. We have several Eyewitness News reporters on this story tonight. We're going to begin with Mike Marza, live at the 9th Precinct in the East Village. Michael. Bill, pretty incredible. Overnight investigators spent hours and hours trying to track down this suspect and Crime Stoppers flooded with tips. We are hearing today that possibly one of those tips came from the most wanted man himself, saying, I've been seeing myself all over the news and I'm going to be at this McDonald's. Well, shortly after that, police were able to nab the person just a few blocks away. Break, what? 62-year-old Frank Robert James didn't say anything as police let him out of the 9th precinct. The massive manhunt ended at 1.42 this afternoon after tips led officers to St. Mark's and 1st Avenue in the East Village where they arrested the most wanted man in New York, accused of unleashing terror in a Brooklyn subway. My fellow New Yorkers, we got it. We got him. Yesterday morning, investigators tracked James entering the King's Highway subway station, wearing an orange construction vest and helmet, toting tools of a would-be massacre, hidden, wheeled in that black cart. The station is three blocks from where police recovered a U-Haul van he rented in Philadelphia, they say, in the back, a pillow and makeshift bed. The key to that truck was recovered at the crime scene. This jacket, the distinctive orange jacket, was also recovered as well as his construction helmet he was wearing, and we, we recovered that in a garbage uh, bin in transit. Police say just before 8.30 Tuesday morning, James boarded a Manhattan-bound in-train, riding some eight stops, and as it reached 36th Street in Sunset Park, eyewitnesses say he put on a gas mask, set off two smoke canisters, and fired 33 shots into the packed train car. Right now I'm feeling scared. I am supposed to take this, this station every day to go to, to school, and now I feel like completely scared. Police say they recovered this 9mm semi-automatic handgun, extended magazines, a hatchet, gasoline, fireworks, and smoke canisters. Federal investigators say James bought the gun in Columbus, Ohio in 2011. We believe, but this is still early in the investigation, that after firing his weapon 33 times at innocent New York City subway riders, Mr. James boarded an R train that had pulled into the station, went one stop up and exited at 25th Street Station. James was last captured on camera entering the Park Slope subway station at 9th Street and 7th Avenue about 45 minutes after the attack. Overnight, investigators discovered hours of video they say James posted on social media, filled with rambling rants about Mayor Adams' crackdown on people living in the subway and hate-filled threats. Now you're going to die. It's clear you're going to die. You're going to suffer and you're going to die. It is still unclear who he was targeting those lash outs, those videos too, and it's still unclear where he spent the night. As prosecutors continue their investigation, they are also trying to figure out why. Why did all of this happen? Next up, he'll appear in federal court in Brooklyn facing those terrorism charges and if convicted, he could face life in prison.